Hello, everybody. You have summoned me with these 10 books. So this is a video that I have seen Steph from Novelty Corner and Izzy from Happy For Now. I will link their channels down below, along with the originator of this video concept, which was Heather from here, Booktube. I didn't watch Heather's original video. I have a relatively new subscriber to Heather, but I saw both Izzy and Steph do this tag recently, or well, not tag, this concept recently, and I thought that it looked like a lot of fun, so I thought that I would do it. I am moving a few things around so that I can do this one in October as it has got the kind of witchy, the spell to summon me idea behind it. And that is what we are going to do today. As you know, I don't really read seasonally. I'm not a Halloween person, but I don't know. I've, I'm getting a bit more into it this time around. I'm reading some horror and witchy books and I'm feeling a little bit more in the mood for that kind of thing. And yeah, I just thought that now is the time to put up a witchy kind of video. So yeah, like I said, it is a kind of spell to summon me. The 10 books that you would talk about and I would appear. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about 10 books that I absolutely love and that are very influential on me and my life and the kind of reader that I am and the kind of person that I am. Um, and so if you talk about any of these books, I mean, the idea is, I guess, the summoning spell, you need multiple things. So you'd have to be all 10. But really, if you talk about these books, then I'm interested. I want to know. I want to talk about them too. If you talk about all 10, then I will appear. <laughs> all right. So I'm just going to, I've got them all piled up over here. I'm just going to go down the list. So starting off with A Monstrous Regiment of Women by Laurie R. King. This is actually the second book in the series. This is the Mary Russell series. If you have been around watching my videos for any length of time, you probably know this is one of my favorite series of all time. So this is the, the Mary Russell series. The first book is actually The Beekeeper's Apprentice. I think A Monstrous Regiment of Women is my favorite of the series, I think. I love them all though. They're fantastic. It is a Sherlock Holmes retelling historical fiction. Very, very well written. Incredibly intelligent female main character. Very feisty. Very, very um, sure of herself. Very feminist. Absolutely love this series. Love the main character, Mary. She's one of my favorite heroines, favorite characters. One of my favorite series of all time. This is a stand-in for the entire series because it's supposed to be 10 books but if you talk about any of the books in this series I'm gonna be interested. I love this series so much. But yeah so there's that one. Going on down the pile we have another stand-in for a series. So this is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy which is the second trilogy in the Realm of the Elderling series. The Realm of the Elderling series is one of my favorite series of all time as well. It is epic fantasy with dragons, magic, with mystery, with amazing characters, fabulous world building. I love Robin Hobb's story writing in this series. I love all of the series. Again, this is a stand-in for any one of the books in this series. I'm going to want to know. I'm going to want to talk to you about it. But The Live Ship Traders are my favorite trilogy. It is my favorite trilogy. And I, I can't really choose. Honestly, I picked this one up just because it's the first one. I can't pick between the three books in the Life Ship Traders trilogy, but absolutely love this series. It's one of my favorite series. Like I said, it's so amazing. If you love epic high fantasy, you absolutely need to read all of Robin Hobb. She is a master. These are fantastic. And if you talk about any of these books, I will come and talk to you about them. Then we have Electra by Jennifer Saint. This is a reasonably new book for me. I read this earlier this year and absolutely loved it. This is the second book of Jennifer Saint's that was written that I've read and I love both of the books that I've read. So I've read this one and her first Ariadne. They are Greek mythology retellings and they are fantastic. I love Jennifer Saint's writing style. I just something about her turn of phrase and the way that she put sentences together. I love. This is a Trojan War retelling. We follow Electra, Clytemnestra, and who else? Cassandra. And it's about the Trojan War and how that affected 
these women's lives and what happened to them, what happened as a result of what the heroes of the Trojan War, the heroes of the Iliad did, and what was going on kind of behind the scenes and for the women who were involved in that whole saga. And yeah, I just absolutely love this. I thought that it was so well written. I just think Jennifer Saint is an order by author for me at this point. I think that she is such a good author, such a good writer. She clearly does her research, but she writes so compellingly and amazing characters. And yeah, absolutely love this one. Also, the cover is beautiful. The cover of the other two were very nice also, but I just can't go past some gold foiling and a some florals. <laughs> okay, another stand-in, although technically I believe that this was published as one thing, or was going to be, but then it was too big so they published it as three. But anyway, we have The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. So this is the first in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This is the grandfather of modern fantasy. If you are a fantasy reader, you will know about The Lord of the Rings. It is the yeah, it is the grandfather of modern fantasy. It is where we get so many ideas from, so much inspiration from, so much of the tropes and the general ideas and themes of modern fantasy stems from The Lord of the Rings. I would not at all say that he started fantasy, that that is not true, but he definitely is the author who kind of shepherded into what it is now. I love The Lord of the Rings. I read this so many times as a kid that I had to stop reading it. <laughs> but I read it again recently with Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany and Kara from Wild Book Garden. A couple other people whose names I have entirely forgotten. I apologize. But I will link all the channels down below. Of course, I should have said before, Heather's channel is also linked below. Um, but yeah, I still think it stands up. I still think that it was amazingly written. Such immersive fantasy. You really feel like you are there in Middle Earth. Um, he describes everything just beautifully. He really built this world. He really built the history. Everything feels real. It feels like it exists. He and uh, he just, he did such an amazing job of creating this world with such depth of history, this feeling of truly existing and truly having so many layers of, like I said, of history, of this real sense of gravitas in a way. I don't know if I'm describing it very well, but it's absolutely fantastic. At its core, it is just a story about a bunch of people who are trying to save the world basically <laughs> by destroying a ring but it's so much more and the world building is amazing the characters are incredible the friendships in this story are just beautiful it is that real sense of found family is so apparent in this story and as you can tell I love the Lord of the Rings it also it's just so meaningful to me because this is my parents favorite book of all time I was read this as a child and the Hobbit as well I was read all three of the fellowship of the trilogy of the Lord of the Rings and I was read The Hobbit. We just, we reference The Lord of the Rings all the time. We have watched the movies together countless times. We have read the books. My parents read the books to me many times as a child and it's just, it's such an important thing in my family and it really brings family to me. If I think about The Lord of the Rings, I think about my family. So it has to be on here. If you talk about Lord of the Rings, I'll be there. I will be there. And I will discuss Lord of the Rings until the cows come home. <laughs> Next up we have Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. So if you guys have been around my channel at all in the last year, you will know that in April of last year when the TV series, the first season of Heartstopper came out on Netflix, I fell head over heels in love with Heartstopper. And I still am. I have not fallen out of love with Heartstopper. I have now read every thing that Alice Oseman has published and I love their writing style. I love all the books that I've read. I love Heartstopper. It's true to say that I am more of a TV show girl. I have to admit that is true, but I love them nonetheless. I love the graphic novels. I love Heartstopper as a whole thing. I love the characters of Nick and Charlie and all the characters from both books and the TV show. All the characters are so well done, so beautifully created and 
acted and written and drawn and all the things. Nick and Charlie are just two of my favourite characters of all time, two of my favourite creations of all time. I love them so much. So if you're talking about Heartstopper, I will be there with bells on. I will discuss Heartstopper and how amazing it is and beautiful and fantastic and wonderful and wholesome and just amazing and adorable. Again, until the cows come home. I love Heartstopper. Then we have... Anne of Green Gables. This has been a favourite book of mine since I was probably about 10. I love this book. Again, this is another one that I watched a series of first. I watched the Canadian made miniseries in the 80s that I cannot get my hands on, even though I've tried. But anyway, I've watched that when I was about 10 I think maybe a little bit younger I'm not sure and I love Anne I love her as a character I love her precociousness I love her adventurous artness I love her romanticism I I just love Anne she's such a good character and I just yeah absolutely loved it when I was a kid and when I was an early teen I think I kind of probably grew out of it a little bit or grew into other things I guess more but I read this again a few probably five or six years ago maybe even longer and realized that I love Anne still and I've read it again a few times over the last few years and it just it's just amazing it's just beautifully written it's just so wholesome similar to Heartstopper there are some really heavy themes that could be done in such a way to make it so hard hitting and so hard but it's not it's just wholesome we just follow this precocious young woman or young girl she's 10 I think when the book opens and 11 and we just follow her as she grows up and she discovers herself and makes a home for herself in Green Gables and Avonlea and it's just absolutely stunning I love this edition as well it is the most beautiful thing one of the most beautiful books that I own and yeah I will be there anytime you mention Anna Green Gables Next up we have Chocolat by Joanne Harris. I love this book so much. I don't think it's technically magical realism but that's what I always call it. It is a historical fiction with fantastical elements. We follow Vianne in, it doesn't actually say when, um, yeah I don't know when in time but we follow Vianne who um, opens a chocolate shop in a small town in France at the beginning of Lent and it is about that. It is about the many characters that she meets, it is about the many ways in which she angers the local priest, um, it's about the antagonism between them, it's about being who you are and it's about tolerance, it's about finding your way, it's about it's feminist, it's about women's power and there are some magical elements which are just done beautifully. I again read this one as a result of something on screen. It was made into a movie well, I'm not sure when but like 2000s-ish which I absolutely loved and so I read the book and absolutely loved it. I've read it again recently and I still think it's fantastic. Really 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 enjoy this one. We'll be there if you talk about it. Next up is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. This is a book that I read when I was in the UK, uh, which was 2006, I think. I was living in London and I read this book and this is all about a other version of London, an underground version of London and I just loved it. I just loved being able to understand some of the references, some of the ways in which the main character who is from top London or London above and goes to London below and some of the ways that he kind of thinks about well that's not true that's not what happens but the way that some of the names of the places in London and some of the the things that happen in the UK and in London um the way that they are made literal and and sort of used as a bit of a amusing anecdotal kind of thing it's so hard to describe but essentially this is urban fantasy set in the UK set in London with some um adventure and some magic and just so well written. I love Neil Gaiman's writing style and I just absolutely love Neverwhere. And next up we have another placeholder for an entire series and that is Jingo by Terry Pratchett. If you have been again around on my channel for any length of time you will know that I absolutely love Terry Pratchett as an author. I have read 
I think most of, pretty much all of, but maybe not quite all of the Discworld novels. Really need to get on to the ones that I haven't read. But anyway, I love the Discworld. The Discworld is a fantasy world that is a disc that sits on the top of, on the backs of four elephants who ride on the back of a giant sky turtle who swims through the galaxy, basically. But it is really a commentary on the world, on our modern life, um, on our belief structures, on our history, on our art, um, specifically English, but there are references to other things around the world. So it's an allegory for us and how we live and who we are and what we do and what we don't do. Um, but in a fantasy land, which is brilliantly written and so, yeah, so well populated and it's still a great fantasy story, still a lot of great adventure stories while also being a commentary. I love the Discworld. I find them fantastic. I just, yeah, absolutely wonderful. Such an amazing author. Love, 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 love Terry Pratchett. This is the fourth book. Yes? No? Yes, maybe. Third or fourth book, I think the fourth book. Yes, the fourth book in the City Watch series, which is one of the ongoing series within the Discworld series. So the Discworld has multiple different series that we can follow different characters. This used to be my favorite of the Discworld novels. I don't know if it is anymore. I have not reread all of the Discworld novels, but I definitely love Jingo. I think it's fantastic. And yeah, it's a placeholder for anything Discworld. I will be there. I, would, I will be summoned by the Discworld. And then finally, because we have Terry Pratchett by himself and we have Neil Gaiman by himself, two of my favourite authors of all time, put them together and you get Good Omens, which is one of my favourite books of all time. If you talk about this book at any point, I will be there with bells on. I would talk about Good Omens again till the cows come home, till you kick me out of your house. I will be talking about Good Omens. It is set in our world. It is about a demon and an angel who are uh, sent to Earth to monitor Earth and to try to convince various inhabitants of Earth to be either evil or good so they can either go to heaven or hell. It is also about the end of days, it's about the Antichrist and it's about what happens if the Antichrist isn't quite so devilish and is maybe a little bit more human. Yeah, amazing. Love this book. The two of them working together was fantastic. They wrote a wonderful book. I highly recommend it. I don't know what you, it's urban fantasy, but it's also commentary, but it's also humorous. It's just amazing. I would, I highly recommend it. I love this book so much. So yeah, that is the, it's not really a tag. At least I don't think that's how Heather created it, but I don't know, is it becoming a tag? But anyway, that's my take on the Summon Me with these 10 books video. Thank you so much to Heather for creating a really fun concept. I wasn't tagged or anything like that. I'm not going to tag people, but I had a lot of fun doing this. So if you watch this and you think it's a great idea, then I think you should go ahead and do it. <laughs> Comment below if you were, what your favorite 10 books that I could use to summon you are. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about here, what you think of them, if you like them, if you don't, etc. If you'd like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then leave me a witch's hat because we are witchy and summoning. All of my social media details are listed in the description below, so if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.